Grammar checking tools provide new opportunities to help students with writing, particularly during the editing phases. These automated written corrective feedback tools, such as Grammarly, or the one included in Microsoft Word, have the potential to help students locate and fix common error types. This kind of synchronous corrective feedback has been shown to support language development, but students and teachers need to know how such tools work to use them to their greatest potential. Many teachers use Grammarly because of its success in finding many types of errors. However, grammar checking tools are not perfect. I'll show you some of the things Grammarly can and cannot do. First, let's talk about what exactly Grammarly is and how it works. What is Grammarly? It's an automated tool to help writers edit their writing, a guide for helping writers notice problems in their writing, and a tool that uses artificial intelligence to support human writing. Now that we have a basic understanding of the program, let's examine how it works. Grammarly identifies language and makes suggestions in four categories, correctness, clarity, engagement, and delivery. You might notice that Grammarly's correctness suggestions tend to be related to prescriptive grammar and mechanics rules such as using punctuation marks or subject-verb agreement. The other categories of suggestions require students to think more carefully because they are often related to a writer's style or personality. Let's look at an example paragraph comparing blogs and essays that a student has put into the Grammarly editor. In this example, Grammarly has identified the verb differs and suggests differ to match the plural subject blogs. On the right side of the screen, Grammarly provides an explanation for its suggestion. Clicking on the blue word differ in the suggestion box at right prompts Grammarly to automatically incorporate the change and removes the red underline. I tell my students that Grammarly is quite good at identifying errors marked in the red correctness category. Errors identified in red are likely to be appropriate suggestions because Grammarly excels at finding and correcting errors related to accuracy. On the other hand, suggestions related to fluency, marked in blue, green, and purple, require more consideration. Students should regard those with more skepticism than the suggestions in the red correctness category. Let's examine the suggestions underlined in blue, the first of which is the quantifier, a number of. Here, Grammarly suggests a one-word quantifier to reduce wordiness. This might be good advice for students adhering to a word limit, but a number of is already correct prescriptively. It's a bit more formal than the others, so for academic writing, it works well. Overall, however, this suggestion is arbitrary. A similar suggestion is made regarding the phrase, that people. Here, the word that is technically not required to form the relative clause, so Grammarly suggests removal. Teaching students how to handle suggestions that require judgment, essentially all the blue, purple, and green marked text, requires modeling critical thinking to determine whether suggestions should be accepted when, prescriptively, there is no error. When I introduce Grammarly, I share advice that they should accept the accuracy flags and beware of the fluency challenges. Whether students accept or reject Grammarly's advice, their use of the tool raises awareness of important language choices involved in the writing process. With this increased awareness, students are prepared to benefit from another technology tool, the Academic Phrase Bank, a website from the University of Manchester. Phrase Bank draws attention to the connection between forms and functions. In the menu on the left, the website provides a list of common communicative functions, such as being cautious and comparing contrasting. Keeping with our example paragraph comparing blogs and essays, let's examine the compare and contrast section. If we click on one of the categories, the window will extend, showing a list of language forms to accomplish the communicative function of introducing differences. Students can use these suggestions to add variety to their writing. For example, from the comparison paragraph above, students might change the simple sentence, 
blogs differ from essays in a number of important ways, to a more sophisticated structure, such as, blogs differ from essays not only in their use of images, but also in the way they incorporate sources. Both Grammarly and PhraseBank are examples of how teachers and students can harness technology to develop writing skills.